Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. I want to do a video today about uh, vocabulary, frequency lists, um, the lexical approach, a lot of things that have to do with vocabulary and language learning. It's something I've talked about before, so I might be repeating myself. But I put a post on my blog, the Linguist on Language blog, and there I posted a reference to a review that I came across of Michael Lewis's uh, The Lexical Approach, which uh, is an often quoted source, and one of my followers here, or my readers or listeners at my YouTube channel, in fact, was the one who brought the book to my attention. I went searching on the internet, and I found this uh, summary of the book. Michael Lewis points out that vocabulary is more important than grammar, uh, language is about words. It's not about some analytical sort of uh, theory. It's not a machine that can be analyzed. It's more of a of a naturally growing organism uh, like a plant or a tree that needs to be fed nourishment, which is which is input, which is uh, basically words, I guess, that causes the the plant to grow. Uh, so, uh, lots of interesting stuff in Michael Lewis's book, The Lexical Approach. I recommend you read, you go to that link that I put in my blog. Uh, I might be able to put the link here in the comments section to this video. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Michael Lewis was the first person to make reference to the fact that we learn languages, we learn these chunks of languages, these collocations, which is another word that's used. Um, where, uh, you know, the native speaker will naturally use certain words with certain other words. The learner doesn't know that those words belong together. That's something that we need to learn. Certainly, I agree with that. Um, but I do have a slightly different take on it. Michael Lewis, of course, because he's trying to instruct teachers on how to teach the language, has a number of exercises or drills that can be used to help... Uh, learners become aware of these uh, of these uh, collocations or chunks and uh, obviously I've often said too that language learning is about becoming aware it's about our attitude it's about how much time we spend and it's about becoming aware so these exercises are undoubtedly a good thing I don't like to do exercises so when I see exercise I immediately sort of pull away and uh, what I have found with regard to phrases and collocations and chunks is the following. And so this might be different from other people's experience, but this has certainly been my experience, that as I'm getting going in the language, I'm actually much more interested in words than in phrases. And if someone tells me this is a common phrase, I may or may not, I mean, I, I would say I don't believe them, but I can't fit that into any context because I don't have enough experience with the language. Now, there are some examples, like je m'appelle, my name is, but in fact, I call myself, or minya zavut in Russian, you know, uh, they call me. Uh, and so those are phrases that you pick up very early. But but beyond that, the sort of many, many, many uh, uh, sort of collocations, if you want, none comes to mind right now. Uh, you know, flaming uh, hot or flaming red coals or uh, things like that, words that we would normally use together. If I see them, I won't remember them. And, and, and so that I find that my reaction to learning these phrases and collocations is much the same as the way I deal with grammar. Yeah, you can give it to me now when I'm getting started. It won't register very much. Uh, on the other hand, after significant exposure to the language, then I can go back in and learn these collocations. Because, you know, because my initial motivation is to learn, is to understand the language, to be able to read it, to be able to understand it when I hear it, it's always the missing word that causes trouble for me. If I know four words and I can't put the phrase together in terms of meaning, and so the, the meaning remains more or less vague to me. I just move on. It doesn't bother me. I know that one day those words will somehow make sense. Right now the structure seems awkward and strange, so I can't really figure out what they're saying, but I know what the individual words mean. And occasionally I've got the wrong meaning from the dictionary, so it's even more confused. None of that bothers me. Uh, what I have found now in my check is that after, you know, a little over two months, you know, I can actually... There's, I don't have that many words in the dictionary, that in the sort of the newspaper rather, that I don't understand. I can read the newspaper. If I hear a radio program from Radio Praha, I don't understand it very well. But if I read it, I understand a lot of it. 
And of course, if I read it with link open or on my iPad or on my computer, I understand it 80%. There's still some confusing turns of phrase that, that uh, leave me a bit, uh, you know, uh, in the lurch, but it doesn't bother me. So my initial motivation is to get as many words as possible. And that's where I have trouble with the graded reader approach. A lot of experts in in uh, sort of vocabulary learning who are in favor of a lot of input, but who also favor other exercises to help with vocabulary, recommend reading material where you have 98% known words, that this is where you get the greatest likelihood of picking up incidental vocabulary because you have so much surrounding, you know, there's so much context that you understand that you can make out the meaning of the missing words. Um, you know, I've been at Czech for two months and a bit. If I had been always looking for content that had 98% known words, I would be, I would have progressed very, very slowly. As it is now, I think I know seven, eight, nine thousand words in Czech. I've been at it for a little over two months. Uh, Link tells me I know 15,000, but I don't believe that. On the other hand, when I open up a new item that I bring in, literature now, I'm bringing in Karol Čapek, uh, uh, whatever, most of the words are, are white. They're supposedly known and very few of those white words do I have to look up. So I must know a lot of words, lots, eight, ten thousand, I don't know, some large number that I know. And the other words that are showing up in yellow, uh, I'm reminded that I've looked them up before and th so those are words that I'm getting to know. So I've got a lot of words and if I had relied on um, you know, uh, graded readers and uh, uh, tried to stay at that 98% comfort zone, I would not have a lot of words. And and the fact that I can't use my check, I can't speak. And, and maybe if I had stayed with very simple content that I would be closer to speaking. But I don't want to speak and then not understand the avalanche of stuff that comes back at me from a native speaker. I want to be able to speak when I understand what the speaker is likely to say to me. And so the fact that I'm not able to say much now in Czech doesn't really bother me. I'm far more uh, determined to build up my vocabulary and I think the big change now is that compared to 20 years ago, you know, there's so much text available with audio. So you can listen, 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 read. Listen, read. There are these online dictionaries. There are systems like Link and others uh, that help you. I can get this stuff up on my iPad and I read it and uh, if I, don't, I can't remember the word, I just you know, tap it on the screen, touch, 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 up come the words, and I read through it. I can even listen to it, read it, and so, and I'm enjoying it because it's more interesting to work your way through this kind of interesting material rather than, uh, you know, staying with the, uh, with the old uh, collocations. Uh, but, you know, just to show you how, uh, oh, I was going to say, so I have this book here, uh, second language vocabulary acquisition, which I, I have a lot of books on the whole subject of language learning. People think that I just ignore what everybody has to say and just, you know, prattle on with my own views. No, no, I have my experience and I also read what other people have to say. And so there are a number of things recommended for vocabulary learning. One of them is the use of mnemon mnemonics. In other words, special things to help you remember. And so here, here are some examples from this person, Jan Holstein. He says, an English learner of German trying to remember the meaning of Raupe, caterpillar, could associate Raupe with the English word rope. Or, an English learner of French trying to learn Paon, peacock, could remember the word pawn. Or, uh, trying to learn the French word soupape, valve, might think of the word soup. Or, the French word brancard, stretcher, might remember the English word branch. Uh, you know, and I'm saying to myself, uh, I am not the slightest bit interested. It'll be a long while before I need the word caterpillar, peacock, valve, stretcher. So, you know, anyway, I just mentioned that as, a, as, a, as an aside. I, I think, you know, 80%, what do they say? 2,000 words account for 80% of all content. Why do you need, um, uh, what do you call it, graded readers? Anything you read, 80% of the words are going to be your basic words. So they're truly important words. You're going to get lots of exposure to them. Learning the other words, the rarer, less common words, but which are the key words for the meaning of what you're reading, 
Now there you need a different strategy and, and a very good strategy is to stay with one writer or one sort of area of subject matter for periods of time so that you get more frequent exposure to them. But on the other hand, within Link, because anything that I have ever looked up is now highlighted for me in yellow, uh, come across it again, I just touch it and there it is. So, so I'm actually reviewing it in context every time I come across it. Now, granted, that doesn't help me. Uh, that doesn't help me when I read a book. And uh, so I do also find myself when reading a book that I will, I will save a lot of these words that I've uh, underlined while reading and I'll bring them into Link so that they will be highlighted when I'm reading uh, you know, on the computer or on my, on my iPad. So just some, some thoughts on the whole question of vocabulary acquisition uh, and uh, you know, collocations and so forth. Uh, yeah, we have to get used to how words are naturally used by the native speaker. We have to increase, increase our awareness of that. It's something that I tend to do after having accumulated quite a few words. I find that I'm starting to do it now more in Czech. So, in fact, what I'll often do in, in Link is I'll go through and uh, quick link the blue words, in other words, the words that, uh, that I don't know. And now I go back to the standard view, so now I'm clean of all the blue words. And then I go through and I just link up some key phrases that I see in there, and so that the blue words are not in the way. So I do a sort of a two-pass system, especially now that I'm more intent on, on going after some of these phrases, some of which are in fact collocations. So there's a bit of a ramble on the subject of vocabulary, which, as I've said many times, to me is the absolute key to language learning. And if you acquire those words through massive listening and reading, then you won't forget. In other words, first of all, by doing that, you are acquiring the language because you're having to listen to it and read it, and the brain is starting to figure it out, uh, and it'll be a lot uh, less difficult to forget it. So vocabulary, input are still the buzzwords, and when I get a chance to speak, I'm going to speak. And, I, and I'm quite confident that in six months or whenever that time is, when I say, okay, now I really want to go after speaking, the, it'll, it'll come. But in the meantime, I don't worry about the fact that I'm quite inept. If somebody were to try to speak to me in Czech, I would stumble pretty badly. So, thank you for listening. Bye for now.